The South Korean Foreign Ministry summoned the Russian ambassador in Seoul and protested against the dispatch of North Korean troops to Ukraine, the Yonhap News Agency reported. As Build columnist Albert Link writes, the call-up of soldiers from the DPRK could be a huge mistake for Vladimir Putin, as he suddenly gets a new enemy in South Korea. A terrible scenario for Putin, South Korea, which has so far supported Ukraine only with humanitarian aid and helmets, reacts to Kim's entry into the war by sending weapons to Ukraine. South Korea has built one of the world's largest armies, with about 3.6 million soldiers, 500,000 active, 3.1 million reserves. The country's arms industry is thriving, with weapons manufactured to NATO standards. The South Korean government has set a goal of becoming the world's fourth-largest arms exporter by 2027, after the United States, Russia, and France. If South Korea decides to support Ukraine with weapons, this will have a huge impact on the course of the military conflict, experts say. It is reported earlier that the DPRK military, trying to escape from the Kursk region, may be drawn into assaults against the Ukrainian armed forces. In particular, they may be forced to attack positions in the same Kursk region. In addition, the military from the DPRK may be redeployed closer to Ukraine. However, according to the expert, they may presumably be used in the Kursk region to claim that they are allegedly defending Russian territory. U.S. and Canadian warships sailed through the Taiwan Strait on Sunday, almost a week after China held massive war games around Taiwan. The destroyer USS Higgins and the Canadian frigate HMCS Vancouver made a routine transit of the Taiwan Strait meant to uphold the principle of freedom of navigation for all countries, read a statement Monday by the U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet. The U.S. Navy, occasionally joined by ships from allied countries, regularly transits the sensitive waterway separating China from Taiwan. China condemned the maneuver, saying it undermined peace and stability in the region. China claims Taiwan as its own territory. China's People's Liberation Army's Eastern Theater Command said it mobilized naval and air forces to monitor the transit of the U.S. and Canadian ships, in accordance with the law. The transiting ships navigated through waters where high seas freedom of navigation and overflight apply in accordance with international law, read the U.S. Navy 7th Fleet Statement. The international community's navigational rights and freedoms in the Taiwan Strait should not be limited, it added. It comes after China conducted large-scale military exercises surrounding Taiwan and its outlying islands last Monday simulating the sealing off of key ports in a move that underscores the tense situation in the Taiwan Strait. Ukrainian fighters have captured two servicemen of the 155th Marine Brigade of the Russian Army in Russia's Kursk region. The prisoners said they were forcibly drafted to the war from prison, adding that they hate Russian President Putin and do not want to fight. The prisoners said they were afraid to be shot by their fellow soldiers if they fled from the battle. It should be noted that the soldiers of the 155th Marine Infantry Brigade of the Russian Army recently shot Ukrainian prisoners. Ты откуда? Фамилия, имя, отчество? Никита Андрей Сергеевич. Марсель Иван Андрей, 99 года. Какая бригада? 155-я. Вдвоем вы, да? Да. Ну, с тюрьмы. Что вы хотите Путину сказать? Какая ваша задача была? Наша задача здесь сидеть, ждать, ждать Ахма. Что вы Путину сказать хочешь? 
президент. Ну да. Я его ненавижу. Мы не за Путина сюда пошли. Мы сюда пошли добровольно. Не патриоты. Ну так а что ты не съебался? Что свои захуярят? Конечно. Слава Украине! Героям слава! Вот так, нахуй.